Hi, I'm Shana Lipner Grover from Sage Country Herbs, and we're here in San Diego at Balboa Park's Trees for Health Garden, and we're gonna go visit some of our plant friends. We are standing under the historical beginning of the Silk Road. This is Morris Alba. This is the white mulberry tree, and it literally started the Silk Road because the leaves of the white mulberry tree are the primary food for silkworms. The Chinese have been cultivating this tree for 4,700 years. And originally, the seeds and the fruit of this tree were very, very, very protected. They were not allowed to leave because silk was such a fine fabric. And it began the Silk Road. Now, the Silk Road was the way that silk got carried around to other, other places, but also it got known as a fabric of royalty. Silk Road also is the road that connects the east to the west, and this is how some of our most aromatic spices got around the world. Cinnamon, allspice, cloves, vanilla bean, nutmeg, all of these traveled along the same road that was originally started by the fabric of silk, which came from the silkworms. This tree is also called common silkworm tree. Now, there are also red and black mulberries, and they are delicious. I hope you've had the opportunity to try one. White mulberries, not only are they not always white, they actually range from white to purple, but they're, they're sweet, but they're pretty bland in their flavor, not nearly as enjoyable for eating. They're great for livestock food, especially when there isn't a lot of ground forage around. But the thing is, is that the silkworms, they can't eat the leaves of the black or the red mulberry. What they really feast on is the leaves of the white mulberry. So this tree really is that very beginning. The Chinese have been cultivating this tree for 4,700 years. That is a long time to be cultivating a tree that is not generally cultivated for its fruit. It's for its leaves. Now, this tree tends to be medium or so, 30 to 60 feet in height. They also tend to be not the longest living tree. Mulberry trees tend to live around the length of a human. Little under 100 years is the typical length, although there are some examples, especially in China, where they've been around for 250 years. Now, this tree has now been spread and cultivated around the world, and silk is more ubiquitous, but it still comes from the silk worm that still likes to eat the leaves of the white mulberry. So the flowers of the mulberry are in catkins. Catkins are, have a central stem. They tend to be pendant or hang down with lots of little flowers on it that don't have any stems, so they're really just attached. Now, the other thing about flowers on catkins is that oftentimes they have no petals, and this is no different. This tree also holds another record. This is such a fascinating little tidbit. The stamen, the male part that produces the pollen, actually catapults the pollen out. It is the fastest plant movement on the planet. The stamen catapult the pollen out at half the speed of sound. It's been clocked at around 360 miles per hour. That's just a incredible when you think about the amount of energy that it has to store in order to have that action. Super, super cool. Another cool thing about this plant is oftentimes leaves will look mostly the same. But in this tree, the leaves can range from two to 12 inches long. They tend to be either flat or chordate, what's called heart-shaped at its base, with soft teeth around the edges. And sometimes they are smooth and sometimes they have deep lobes or sinuses. And that can be a wide range. Now this tree also has another cool thing about it that it is deciduous in areas like here. We are in wintertime in San Diego. We are in a temperate subtropical environment. So it's deciduous and it's dropped most of its leaves. But in tropical environments, this tree will be an evergreen and it will just hang on to its leaves because it doesn't need to drop them with the cooler temperatures.
Now, of course, the fruit is loved by birds and they are the primary distributors of the seeds as they eat the fruit and then fly away. And then the seeds come out within their digestive systems and help to plant these trees in other areas. Now, historically, of course, since this tree has been around, the fruit has been used to make jams, jellies. It's been fermented into wine. It's been used to make syrups and, of course, livestock feed and all the other reasons why anything that enjoys non-toxic fruit would like to eat them. As with any fruit that has sweetness to it, there's going to be some antioxidants there. Antioxidants are often the coloring matter in a fruit, and those antioxidants are developed in relationship to the development of the sugar because it's that sweetness that's often drawing in the animals that are going to eat it, which are then going to help distribute the seeds. Now, of course, the fruit and the leaves have been historically used for a wide variety of medicinal issues, from dental issues all the way to cardiovascular issues. The fruit has been used for a wide variety of digestive issues, including, of course, gas and bloating. It's been also used for vision issues, as well as nervous system issues like anxiety and general stress. The antioxidants in the fruit have also been used because even white berries still have antioxidants in there. And some of those antioxidants have been shown to be helpful with visual acuity and vision issues. And this fruit has historically, and the leaves have been used for things like liver cleansing as well. As with many leaves, they are very rich in things like calcium, as well as a lot of other minerals like iron. There's vitamins and other nutrients and carotenoids, which are part of the carotenes that are precursors to vitamin A. So that's another reason why they work well with our eyes. Interestingly enough, the very leaves that silkworm entire diet consists of, we can eat them here and there. But if we take in too many leaves, there are some side effects, things like headaches or an upset stomach or maybe even diarrhea. One of my other absolute favorite parts of this tree is the fact that it fits into a wide range of ways that it benefits not only humanity, but the earth. This tree is amazing at things like carbon sequestration, so helping remediate the earth, helping remediate soil. It's really great at helping to process out pesticides. It's also been really effective at feeding a wide variety of animals, humans, etc. This tree is considered one of the top plants for sustainable development because it is food and nutrition. It helps soil remediation. It can grow in a wide variety of landforms, as well as a wide variety of climates. It is adaptable to being evergreen or deciduous. It is a benefit to plant this tree because it can grow in a wide variety of areas and it is benefiting to the humans, the soil, the air, the animals in so many different ways. I hope you get to know Mulberry and if you haven't seen it when it was not dormant, here's an example of what it looked like last spring when we came here to Balboa Park to the Trees for Health Garden. Come on down in spring and you'll see what it looks like when it's in its full glory and maybe even get to try a berry.